Me Time and Murder is intended for mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Oh well, big surprise. Tris, what are you drinking? Today I'm drinking a Pucka Vanilla Chai. You always, you always have that one. Oh, I love that Vanilla Chai, yeah. What are you drinking today, Marie? I'm not actually drinking it, I'm just having water, but I want to talk about this one. I'll probably have it for breakfast, so... Okay. It's I got it in Ikea. It's called Low Hilo or La Hilo, ah, Low Hilo, okay. Nutritious and Delicious Unicorn Dreams. Oh my god, mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> it, I don't know if you should drink that. <laughs> it is so pretty. It's got rainbows. It's actually got it's so colorful. I got it in Ikea. It is Low Hilo, first in the world, collagen. Hyaluronic acid energy drink to boost your no day way. and beauty. OMG discount. <laughs> what? Wait a minute. Oh, wait. What is, is okay? F- forget the OMG yeah. discount. No, it's like I didn't English. read like a proper sentence. It has got 105 uh, milligrams of caffeine. It's got 50,000 oh, nice. milligrams of collagen. I don't actually know if that's a lot. Do you know what I mean? I don't know if that is. That could be yeah. like nothing. It sounds a lot. It's better than nothing though. Yeah. It is sugar yeah. free. It also has vitamin C and it also has zinc. Get out. <laughs> you got this in Ikea. This is like, Ikea. is it an Ikea own brand I product, don't think or? so. I haven't actually looked it up. Uh, I just, um, they have like six different flavors. Spell the name? L-O-H-I-L-O. Oh. Low high low. I thought it was like the Halo, you know, the low cal ice cream. I thought maybe it was the same people, but I don't think so. Uh, low high low. Does low high low sound kind of Hawaiian to you for some reason? Uh, maybe. Okay, I'm looking on their website. Fun- functional collagen drink, and I was like, oh, that is right up our That's alley. Very cool. It is very cool. It is a drink and a beauty product. That is very cool. It's ticking all the boxes. Wow. Oh, there. The, there's... Yeah, I have all of these ones. <gasps> Miriam, they do ice cream. They do ice cream too? Yeah, I'm on their website. Oh! Cookie dough. 280 calories. Oh, that's even less than the Halo Talk. Oh? Although, how much smaller is it? That's <laughs> right, it's a tiny you all, you got to look at the per 100 grams. You do. You do. Don't let them feel... Oh, I'm looking at the... Miriam, there's a Unicorn Dreams ice cream as well. Oh, I haven't tried it yeah. yet. Maybe I should have tried it this morning. Oops. I'm sure they're nice. It, it is gorgeous packaging. I thought you would like it. It's very cute. It's yeah. adorable. So I have, I got all of the brands. There's one, Elderflower and Lemon, which also has collagen. Um, mm-hmm. Then there's like Boot Camp, UZ Lime, which is like BCAA. What is that? You probably know what that is. BCAA. I'm not too sure. I think it's for it says for fitness lovers, so it must be some kind of replenishment thing. Oh, branch chain amino acid. So has that got something to do with protein? Oh, it probably does have to do with keto. Yeah. Mm. Maybe I don't know. So I'm very excited. I've this. definitely heard people say that acronym before. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not very fit though. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'll try and get back to 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 you. Yeah. Uh, what about your me time? Nice. What you about your me time? Try. Uh, for my me time, I'm doing a little hair mask. Oh, me too. It's. Oh my god! No way. Me. Um, I'm doing the L'Oreal El Vive. I think you've heard me talk about this range before. Their Dream Lengths range, and this mm-hmm. is their heat mask. So it's supposed to warm up. You put the kind of mm-hmm. conditioner on, and then you put a mask on, and then it's like a self heating mask. So I'm oh, really okay. excited, but kind of scared. Well, for my me time, I also have uh, L'Oreal LV. I have the L'Oreal LV Intensive Purple Mask in my hair. No way! Yeah. This is so <laughs> weird. They're so similar. Yeah, yeah. This never happens. Yeah. What's the purple? Is that for blonde? Or? Yeah, it's just to make it less yellow, less brassy. Mm. I'm also sitting here with my new Yankee Candle, so I'm like all the me time. Oh, nice. What? Uh, I was going to say what? What flavor? I know. What, uh, I, I always say scent? that in the Yankee Candle <laughs> store. You? I was just like, have you got any new flavors? And they're like, what? And I was like, smells. Any new smells? 
<laughs> yeah, it's like a vanilla creme brulee. It smells amazing. Oh my god. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, it's like their new brand. Oh. I think it's like a soy wax I... or something. No way. Mm-hmm. I love creme brulee. Mm-hmm. I've had a real um, creme brulee. I've had about three of them in the past like two months. It's so bad. <laughs> I just, if it's on a menu, I just can't help myself. Really? We had, um, yeah, we had um, in the Europe Hotel recently w- when we were staying there the other week. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was really weird. It was an Italian restaurant, right? Mm-hmm. But then on the dessert menu, it had this Spanish, 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 <laughs> Spanish person with a lisp, <laughs> Spanish cremolata oh. and chocolate cremolata and it came out and it was like a creme brulee but it's chocolate so I was like in an Italian restaurant with a Spanish dish but like from but it's like a French dish but dish but like a Spanish twist it was just so weird I was like what am I eating freaking unreal it was basically like chocolate creme brulee Ooh. it was unbelievable i found these gummy bear sweets mm. that don't have sugar alcohols in them by the way oh they're mm-hmm, they're on amazon they use these fibers instead it's really interesting mm-hmm. there's these sweets that are like full of fibers what are they called they're called smart sweets mm-hmm. um because I watched a nutritionist on YouTube and she was talking about the the sugar bear, the Haribo's golden bear oh sugar God, bear yes. story. We have to do another and, one. <laughs> there's so many. And she of was them. saying, yeah, and she was saying like that there's a real need for like uh, alcohol, sugar for alco- sugar alcohol free gummy sweets basically like there is like, there's a real need i think there's other needs yeah. in the world other than <laughs> 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 no it's she, very important she sounds so dramatic <laughs> <laughs> she, there is a real need that's a um, real need <laughs> it is it's a real problem so i don't know i might order these sweets but they're really expensive coming from america so oh gosh and then they probably don't yeah. even have any flavor that's the that's the risk, yeah. Are they even going to taste nice? I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I, I might not order them straight away. I want to get the like the you know the gummies that are like for like your keratin and collagen and stuff like that, like the beauty basically oh, ones. Oh yeah, they're cool. Try the gummies. I've had gummy um, apple cider vinegar because whenever if you ever try to take apple cider vinegar tablets. I have them, but oh. I, I take them for a while, but no. But like, you open the jar and the oh, the smell hits you. I love apple cider. And mine are like chalky. Mine are not coated. Oh. Mine are like uh, powdered. Oh. The apple cider vinegar, and then they've like formed it into a little. So it's like you can taste it when you put it on your tongue. It's it doesn't have a like a gel coating around it. Mine are so in like the normal little, Mine are in the little plastic. No, Capsule? mine doesn't have that. Oh. It's like you put you put it on your tongue and it's like a chalky... Uh, oh, God, it's the worst. So basically because I didn't enjoy those, I got the apple cider gummies and they are unreal. They're, they're so tasty. They're good? Oh, my God. They're like sweets. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're really good. Okay, shall we start? Let's do this. Yeah. It's 10 days before Christmas. Monday, December 15th, 2008 in Hoth House. Ireland. I'd, I've never been there. Mm, I don't know how to say that either. I think it's this outside of We're doing this then. You're, 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 just, you're not telling me what the case is. We're just going to... I kind of like that. Oh. Oh, I forgot yeah. to ask no, you. No, I like it. I like... No, I like it. Okay. All right. From what, now what on, I'll just, we'll just go in blind. Well, <laughs> well I don't know. What do, you th- do you know what? I never usually know them anyway. It's true. Same. So, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't actually really matter. What you, okay. Okay. Go for it. The very successful and affluent 52-year-old Eamon Lillis got up at about got up at about 6:30 a.m. and did his usual morning sit-up routine. Eamon, just like myself. I know, fuck, mm. I just like, oh, I should like take a page out of Eamon's book. <laughs> Maybe that's how you become successful. <laughs> I'm never going to be successful. You got to be you got to have ripped abs to be successful. <laughs> Yeah. No, those morning people though, they are successful people. Yeah, it's true. See today and all of that. <laughs> oh, God. No matter how many times I hear it, I'm never gonna do it. See, never gonna day. get up, make lemon water, oh god no meditate. No. Do you know no. I don't eat till about like 
one o'clock. No, I eat as soon as I go in. But I, I'm like. Yeah, I'm like three cups of coffee. You have to teach children, though. Oh, I need to. I'm, uh, I'm like jumping around the coffee, classroom. Coffee, yeah. No. I have yeah, to. Yeah, I just hold out until like one o'clock and then I finally become human. <laughs> all right. Sorry. Okay. Eamon's doing his sit-ups. Yeah. Shame on all of us. Yeah. Um, Eamon ran a successful production company called Toy Town Films with his 46-year-old wife, Celine Cawley. A former, right. mm, a former model and a Bond girl. Shh, you mean you live in the life? Live in the life, yeah. Okay. At 6.55 a.m., Eamon made tea for the household. That was himself, himself, his daughter and wife. At about 6.30 a.m., he dropped his daughter at school. Then he met an old college friend to catch up. They mostly talked about Christmas preparations and how Eamon strung his light, his lights last night, but they had blown, but the, but the bulbs had blown. So this is a very boring conversation. I know. This is like, <laughs> what old, uh, old people men right, talk, talk about. about. Oh God, I never want to be like that. Oh God, me neither. It's pro- I probably will, like, for sure. <laughs> We just Actually, talked for like twenty minutes about like herbal gummies. <laughs> like I know that's so true. Yeah, like what age are we? After chatting about Christmas lights, he headed home, only stopping along the way to pick up a newspaper in the newsagents. Okay. All was quiet at the household. That was until nine thirty a.m. when a neighbor heard a woman scream. Oh Jesus! At nine thirty a.m. Yeah. A.m. So early. What, so, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. When was the conversation about the Christmas lights and the newspaper? This was all in the morning. Yeah, he like dropped his kid, his daughter, off at school, then went for coffee with his old college friend. God, he gets a lot done in the Doesn't morning. Doesn't he? And he's, and he's done his sit ups. <laughs> what? It's, God, okay. Right. At 10 02 a.m., Eamon called 999. Oh no. Mm-hmm. What happened in that half an hour? I know, right? I was like, is she going to okay. pick up on that? I was like, yeah. Quite a quite a long time. Yeah. Obviously his his obviously his call was recorded. In a high-pitched yeah. and frantic voice, he tells the dispatcher <gasps> that he and his wife had just been attacked. Okay. He felt but his wife has no pulse. She needs an ambulance. The dispatcher oh, yeah, wow. <laughs> the dispatcher. Inst- I mean, she's dead. Yeah. yeah. The dispatcher instructed and directed Eamon to administer CPR to his wife. Oh God, so sad. Mm. And it's like Christmas. Oh. Oh yeah. How close is it to Christmas? It's the fifth of December. Fifteenth of oh. September. No, oh, no. Okay. December. Okay. Yeah. Ten days to Christmas. Oh my God. Guardy and ambulances rushed to the scene. Celine's body was found lying on the outside decking in a pool of blood. What? On the outside? Outside, decking? on like the patio decking. In the freezing cold? Mm-hmm. Apparently it was super frosty as well. Because it's like the morning oh as well. God. Why are we doing a Christmas episode now? I didn't <laughs> realise it was a Christmas episode. <laughs> oh, right, okay. okay. <laughs> Unless I save it <laughs> for Christmas. I'm getting so excited for Christmas with this episode. I know it's really inappropriate, but I'm like... <laughs> A blood-stained brick lay on the patio beside her, and Eamon was still. Oh God. I know, and Eamon was still administering good. CPR. Yeah. Where did the brick come from? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where do you think? Well, maybe it was just lying in their back garden, or, you know, like on the patio. That's where. That's where he keeps his brick. F- Father, <laughs> Father Jack. I was wondering if you'd notice. <laughs> where you gonna say that? <laughs> <laughs> he loves that brick. No brick, but um, on like, do you know if they were doing a bit of DIY or something, they're building and they just had spare bricks in the back garden kind of thing? Maybe, I suppose so. Eamon had scratches on his face and a pronounced lump on his forehead. Okay, Eamon. Mm. This bit is gross. On his ring finger, the nail had been completely torn off. Great, Blah. great. Let's get past this really, really fast. Uh, I hate part. that. I hate that. Oh, I hear everything about that. And did Eamon say that there had been an intruder? Yes. Or... He said they'd been attacked okay. by a man. Attacked, sorry. Okay, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So do we believe you, Eamon? Mm. 
Mm. We'll have to see. I liked the sound of everything about Eamon right up until now, but I mean... Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm far it sounds like he has to... his life together. He sounds... Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Eamon told the guardie that he had arrived home after taking the dog... After taking the dogs for a walk and walked in on a masked man standing over his wife with a brick in his hand. Okay. <laughs> like, right in that very moment. I know, it's so like... What are the chances, know, do you know what I mean? It's like, are you in the Matrix? Mm. What is this? Like, super, yeah. super drama. Eamon ran to defend his wife, but the man attacked him and fled out the back by jumping over the fence. Okay. Celine was quickly rushed to hospital, but it was too late. She was pronounced dead at 10.56 a.m. Oh, God. Yeah. She died quite quickly. Very quickly. Which is a good, in a way, not too much pain. she didn't suffer for too long. Yeah. At the guard station, Eamon handed over the clothes he was wearing. He then gave a de- detailed description of the man he said attacked him and Celine. He was 5 foot 11, 5 foot 11, the same height as himself, wiry and strong. He was wearing a black balaclava over his face. He had a dark grey bomber jacket with black sleeves, jeans and gloves. The man was also carrying a rucksack. Eamon also surmised that the man was right-handed as he was holding the brick in his right hand. Okay. I think that's a bit weird. Most people are. Yeah. I know it's a weird, yeah, I don't, you don't usually hear people saying that. Yeah. When they're describing never, someone. Never. Unless they asked him, the police, was he right or left handed? Or did he just serve up that information yeah. himself? Unprompted. I feel like I, I wouldn't notice. Like, I have uh, friends yeah, that I've been friends. be so shocked in that yeah. moment. But, like, I'm like friends with people for years, and if you were to ask me, is he right or left handed? <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, I have no idea, <laughs> yeah. actually. <laughs> I would just say right, because they usually, usually are. But yeah, I know what you mean. It is a detail that's a bit odd that he noticed. Uh-huh. Yeah. In fact, Eamon was convinced this was the same man that had burgled the house prior. So then he supplied what? the guardie with the name of a local man that he suspected. Guy is like, he's just pinning, up, pinning it on this mm-hmm. guy? Mm-hmm. Okay. Eamon told the guardie that his wife would have probably confronted the intruder. He said, Celine is a fighter. She's a tough nut. She'd have confronted oh. someone. She was no wallflower. If Eamon did it, mm-hmm. and he's saying all these like great things about his wife, mm-hmm. I'm going to be pissed off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. That night, Eamon and his daughter went to stay in his brother-in-law's with his brother-in-law so the guardie could have access to search and gather evidence from the family home that was now a crime scene. Eamon was not put out by this at all and told the guardie they should do whatever it takes. I just want him caught. However, guardie doubted Eamon's story. Mm, getting there like yeah when searching and the way he's like I just want him caught it's like as if he kind of knows who it is already yeah yeah the name Mm. he gave yeah when searching the house they noted that the couple had been sleeping in separate bedrooms okay Mm -hmm. which I mean I think it can be normal if somebody is a a heavy snorer or like or COVID or COVID (laughs) like you and Dan (laughs) but like But yeah, I suppose they were like, mm, what's this? What's mm. what's mm. going on here? Mm-hmm. You know what cops mm-hmm. can be like as well. Yeah, you got to take note of everything. Yeah. However, in one of the rooms, Gardy found a note written in neat black lettering on two small sheets of white notebook paper. It read, hmm. she will get that wedding dress. She will marry Keith next June. She will send out the invites in January. You will never be with her properly. The only way you can be with her is to live here. Think of the positives in the relationship. You will never take her to France. She will never share your bed. You are running out of time. What? I'm so confused. Right? Who wrote that to? Can you, can you read it again? What's that screaming in the background? Oh, the children. 
They're the worst. <laughs> it's constant. Mm-hmm. Any sunny day, when I wake up on a sunny day, I don't think, oh, it's a lovely day. I think, oh, the children. The children. They're going to be out <laughs> playing, screaming. It's always screaming. You'd think like a murder's going on. <laughs> That's how they scream. We did it when we were young. We did. I remember screaming. Because you know when you're like getting chased? Yeah, God. You scream. Oh, God. And you do think you're going to die in the moment <laughs> if this person catches you. It's like the end of the world. That's how they scream. I know, I remember it too. Do you remember I, that feeling? I loved it. The adrenaline. Yeah. You would just be like running yeah. and somebody so would be exciting. like close behind you going to like tip you yeah. or tag you and you're like Aah! Yeah. Oh my God. It's just like, <laughs> it is like, why are you so scared in that moment? <laughs> it's so stupid. I love that. We used to play that so much. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so hopefully they will be quiet now. Okay, I think that yeah, I think they might be moving away. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, so back to this like weird creepy note. Mm. So they found it in one of the bedrooms. Mm-hmm. It read it was on two small pieces of like notebook paper, you know, the lined one. And it was just sort of lying about, was it? Or I don't know how they found it. They just said they found a okay. note written. Okay. To me, I think it was written on no- notebook paper and then he ripped it out and set it on the dresser or something, you know? Okay. Yeah, it's just like, I'm just wondering whether they wanted the police to find it. Do you know that mm-hmm. kind of way? Like, or, yeah. Mm, oh. Do you know what I mean? A bit like the John Bonet thing where it's like they wanted the note to be discovered. And... You need to get off well, the John Bonet. You You're obsessed. Well, that's if you believe that thing. I will never get off that case. <laughs> never. <laughs> Did you, do you remember the note? Should I read it one more time? It might be helpful, yeah. Okay, everybody listen. There's a lot everybody, to unpack. There is a lot. I'm just wondering, I'm wondering who is writing it? Mm-hmm. Are they, you know, or are they writing it pretending to be somebody else? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The note read, she will get that wedding dress. She will marry Keith next June. She will send out the invites in January. You will never be with her properly. The only way you can be with her is to live here. Think of the positives in the relationship. You will never take her to France. She will never share your bed. You are running out of time. Yeah, that second time didn't help. (laughs) (laughs) I'm still just... Still very confusing, Mm, right? Yeah. And it's so, like, disjointed. It's, like, all over the place as well. It is. Yeah. Have you got anything from that? No. The only thing that I can get is that I'm starting to suspect Eamon, okay? Uh And I think Eamon wrote this note to himself. Yeah. Because she is possibly, or at least he believes that the wife is leaving him for another man mm-hmm. and he's sort of trying to a little pep talk for himself by convincing himself that but I don't understand where when it, when it says the only way you can be with her is if you are here but maybe that's why he killed her so then she's kind of always there or something Ooh. I don't know I don't well I don't, that's me reading into it but you will think of the positives in the relationship you will never take her to France is taken to someone to France like a big annoyance or, or <laughs> like I hate you know France I mean? like did she, was she always asking to go to France or something or oh, we'll have to I just read and find out, out. Time. you're running out of time has that got something to do with a ransom and money I don't know mm-hmm. I don't know yeah it doesn't really it's not given me much imagine being a police officer and you have to properly like decode that yeah yeah, right. God, what a job. Yeah. Hurt, it was, I know. Like, it's hurt your head. Very cryptic, yeah. Yeah. In the wardrobe. It's very intriguing. Yeah, right? Yeah, the mm. note, it got me as well. I was just like, ooh. Oh, yeah. What's going on? a good on? note. <laughs> good mm. note. Mm. I do, yeah, yeah. In the wardrobe in the same bedroom, Gardy found a polo t-shirt stained with blood and a pair of black boots also spattered in blood. Okay. In this are we, these are Eamon's 
booth, St. Eamon's Polo. Sounds like it, right? Yeah. Well, who else lives in the house? Just the daughter. Mm-hmm. On the bedside table was a smeared watch. Later, when it was later tested, it did show traces of blood. Okay, a watch smeared with blood. Yeah, it was like somebody had like wiped it and it was like still, oh, you know what gotcha. I mean, smeary. Okay. Yeah, yes, yes, gotcha, okay. Then the guardie made their way up to the attic. Up there, they found a pile of children's clothes and books. They thought it was strange, so they dug through it. Creepy. At the bottom of this pile was a heavy suitcase. Stop it. Mm-hmm. No. Guardy. Don't do this to me. Guardy. Is it just full of Christmas decorations? Don't do this to me. <laughs> it's, got, it's extra lights. Oh, my gosh. Guardy opened the suitcase. It was full of camera lenses. Okay, that's okay. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. Remember, I'm they do. I, I, you hadn't given me a warning, so I was like, "This can't be actually that bad." <gasps> Remember, they own a TV production company, so it's not. Yeah, you know. Okay, yeah, on... yeah. Well, I was thinking a body in the suitcase. <laughs> no. Yeah. But under these lenses was was a big black bin bag. They pulled out the lenses and opened the bin bag. Inside, Gardy found a heavily blood-stained pair of jeans, a v-necked black jumper, boxer shorts, and white socks, all covered in blood. Oh, dear. Mm -hmm. He thought he'd hid them under the camera stuff. Mm -hmm. There were also a pair of men's gloves and a pair of yellow rubber gloves, you know, for the dishes. Yes, I've got a pair of marigolds, don't they call them? Yeah, marigolds, yeah, I have Mm. them too. I need a new pair. Mm. Also, in the bag was heavily, heavily blood-stained kitchen paper towels. He tried to mop up the blood with kitchen towels? I know, that's such a man, isn't it? It's like... Yeah, it's just like, use a dishcloth. Why? Like, Jeremy always uses dishcloth towels. Does he? Unless it's like bounty, which I do not buy bounty, but yeah, <laughs> I would never think to. It's not absorbent enough. I would, yeah, I'd use a towel. Yeah, it's like yeah. paper towels are for like a tiny little spill. Mm, you know what mm. I mean? Later, the blood. Later, when the blood was tested, it came back as who's the wife's blood. Sorry, what is her name? Because I keep just saying the wife. The wife. Celine. 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 Such a beautiful name. Yeah. As well. Okay. Celine. Celine's blood. Celine oh Cawley. Awful. Celine Cawley? Yes. That's such a nice name. Eamon wasn't telling them the whole story. Oh, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So Gardy dug deeper into his personal life. Here, they found out that he was having an affair with a 31-year-old masseuse, Jean Tracy. Oh, Eamon. Mm-hmm. Jean willingly told Gardy that she had been having an affair with Eamon for the past 10 weeks, despite herself being engaged to a man named Keith. <gasps> yeah. oh. Remember? Keith. He was, yeah. His name yeah, was on the list. I was, I was that, yeah. <gasps> oh my god. Her wedding date was set for June. Also, <gasps> like on the little list of paper. The letter. <gasps> mm-hmm. Jean told Gardy that the relationship had started during one of Eamon's weekly back massages. Yeah, I mm-hmm. knew that. Mm-hmm. Back massage, eh? Oh, mm-hmm. too much rubbing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Oh. Apparently, during, <clears throat> apparently, during the treatment, he had asked her what she was thinking. Oh, uh, it's like a bad porno or something. Could you? Oh, could you? I feel for those women sometimes. That they must get hit on all the know. time. Yeah, mm. it's got to be a hard job. Jane replied by taking his hand and placing it on her pulse. That's what I'm thinking, she said. All right, Jane. <laughs> on her pulse like her wrist? I don't know what she means by pulse. Was it her neck? I don't know. Like her pulse was racing or whatever. <gasps> what does this Eamon guy look like? Well, he does sit up, so he must be hot. <laughs> yeah, but to me, a man who asks for that in a massage, I know. in my head, does not look hot. <laughs> Do you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. yeah. I don't know how to that me, they're like, visual. 
sleazy. Harry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's just, he's just not a good, it's not the right time for that. I know, to be creepy. Well, apparently it was. Yeah, yeah well, she responded. Yeah. All right. The next time he came in, they kissed in one of the treatment rooms. Oh, my, my. Mm, so escalated slowly. Oh, my God. Then, the following Monday, they went to Eamon's house. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. When Celine and the daughter were away in England. Wow. Mm. Okay. No need for that. Like, I know. Eamon sounds very well off. Yeah. Can afford a hotel. I'm not telling people how to cheat, but, you know, <laughs> go into your house is just a bit... It's a bit disrespectful. It is, it is. To the family home. It is. According to Jean, Eamon even bought her a phone so that they could, so that they could text secretly throughout the day. Yeah. 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 From then on, they started to meet every Monday, which was Jean's day off from the salon. Oh my gosh. December 15th, the day Celine was killed was a Monday. <gasps> Jane was honest with the Guardi and handed over her secret phone, on which they found more than 200 texts and almost 90 calls in the past two weeks prior to Celine's death. Wow. On Tuesday morning, the day after the murder, and the day after they were supposed to meet, Jane texted Eamon asking, Is everything okay? And then again at 11.15am. Getting a bit worried now, babe. However, once Jean found out about the murder and the arrest, she cut contact with Eamon. As you would. As you would. I'm, I was about to ask a question and then I answered it in my head. What? I was going to say, why do people kill their partner instead of splitting up? Probably they didn't have a prenup. Probably. That's got to be the reason. Oh, you know. Well, there's more to come, Tres. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. But just like, like the Chris Watts guy. Like, yes. Why did he need to kill his whole family? I know. I, you yeah. can have a new partner. It's not illegal. I know. You can Just... divorce your wife, actually. You can. I know. You know? It's so... Oh, it makes me so angry. Anyway. The Chris Watts case is just haunting. Ooh. It's just like... There's just... Really... And they're so average. Just like a, a happy young family. Oh, it's just like chilling. kills me. At 6.55 a.m., Sunday, December 20th, Gardy went to Chris Crawley's house, Celine's brother, where Eamon had the audacity to stay and arrest him. Okay. When questioned by police, Eamon initially denied having an affair with Jane, saying that he... <laughs> I know, right? He's been caught. Like, like just give it up. Give it up. I hate that. Mm. I mean, like, it's not illegal to have an affair. Why would you deny yeah. it? It's kind of like he's got no backbone. Yeah. I, I was listening to this, um, I told you about him before, this body analyst on YouTube, and he mm. was saying that uh, guilty people will never want to admit any sort of guilt in any way, oh, any or shape guilt. or form. Uh-huh. And that's how you know when someone, yeah, if oh. they're not even willing to say like, oh, you know, maybe I got a bit angry or I shouted mm-hmm. or, you know, if they won't take any sort of blame, that actually means that they probably are guilty. It's really interesting. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. So this guy saying like, oh, no, 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 I didn't have an affair. Like, that's just making him look worse. Yeah. And then it's like, how yeah. are we meant to believe you if you lie about that? Yeah, this is it. Yeah. And it's yeah. So You've got pro- no backbone. Yeah. You've got no integrity. You, yeah. Yeah. You're just a little slimy yeah. weasel, basically, trying yeah. to weasel out of everything. Eamon said to the police that he had a good and very, very close relationship with his wife, Celine, both professionally and personally. Eamon described That's Celine as a tower thing. of strength, he told Gardy. What? Yeah. By the way, maybe name of this episode, Eamon the Weasel. <laughs> Eamon the Weasel! Just putting that out there. Unless I he think is. of a better one. He is, he is so spine. <laughs> Unless you think of a better one. Spineless, like yeah. So spineless. Yeah. yeah. And like bigging up the wife again. Mm-hmm. That's he doesn't need to do that. It's like he's virtue signaling. It's like Ooh. I obviously adore her so much. Like yeah. how like how much yeah, I talk how about her. I speak of yeah. her. Yes, yeah. yes. Like, oh it can't be him. Hmm. It's fooled us. <laughs> <laughs> um 
He told Gardy that they had got married in 1991 and then in 1992 it was actually Celine who had started Toy Town Films. Oh, really? Hmm. He then joined her company roughly oh. two years later, becoming a producer and company director. Okay, so she owned... Okay, mm-hmm. but does he own half of the business? Did she I think so. Let, so she must have let him in. Yeah. Duh. Never let them in. I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> that is scary, though, that mm-hmm. he kind of now like, has her business and the house. Yeah. Well, he's not going to get away with it. It doesn't sound like it. Hopefully, fingers crossed. But Well. He's trying. Gar- Wait, she's dead. She <laughs> yeah. is dead. Yeah. So, oh, it yeah. makes me so angry. I know. I know. I know. I was angry when I was writing this as well. Yeah. Gardy then probed e- Eamon about the two separate bedrooms. Okay. Sort of like saying to him, oh, I suppose mm. you have a sexless marriage, which he denied. Eamon said, no, simply he and Salim started sleeping in separate rooms when their daughter was born. And it was just a habit that stuck. Celine was a heavy snorer and kicked around a lot in her in her sleep. This the, okay. the separate... Maybe just the daughter now, do we know? I'm not too... She's about six-ish. Yeah, if she's been like dropped off at School, school or nursery yeah. or preschool or whatever yeah. it is at that age. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. That's a long time to be in separate beds. I don't know. People yeah. do it. People do do people, it. Like People do, I guess, yeah. Like If you are loud enough and it keeps you mm-hmm. up, like... Like you yeah. gotta, you gotta sleep. You have to get your sleep. I know. You, you do. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> Eamon said he loved his wife. However, when he asked if he was unhappy in his marriage, he replied to the guardy, "No comment." Oh, for God's sake! I know. Eamon. So That's stupid. That makes it helpful. I know. It was after this no comment that he admitted to having the affair with Jane. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. So he, yeah, he's coming clean. He said well, only because he's caught. Yeah. He said, I did have an affair, but it was absolutely nothing to do with this. Of course, <laughs> I know. Of course, they had her phone. Mm-hmm. Eamon admitted that Jean had come to his house at least three times. She had also went shopping with him to buy a coat in Brown Thomas. They also went shopping in the Pavilions Shopping Centre in Swords and New Bridge House in Dublin. Gardy asked Eamon if perhaps maybe he was jealous that Jean was engaged to be married. To which Eamon replied, I don't do jealous. Why did he kill his wife? Why didn't he kill Keith? Keith? I don't know. The fiancé. I guess we'll just have to listen to the story. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Eamon described this affair to Gardy as, quote, some kind of midlife crisis, unquote. Although it wasn't enough that he was going to leave Celine. He said that I would hate to break up a family. Gardy suggested... I'll just murder them instead. (laughs) Yeah, that's it. Gardy suggested that Celine had found out about the affair on the morning of Monday 15th. Eamon denied this. He said there had never been an argument on that on the Monday morning of his wife's wife's death. Yeah, somehow. Somehow I don't believe that. (laughs) We've had rows before, but nothing like that. I just wouldn't be capable, not to my wife, not to her, not to anyone. You can't have an argument with anyone? What? The, I think like that, like to that escalation of violence. I think, I oh, think sorry, that's what oh, he means. Oh, the violence thing. I oh, right, think okay. that's what he means. Okay. Gardy said to him that they had interviewed many people and not one person had a bad word to say about him. Hmm. However, in the interviews, Celine was often described as a... Strong, formidable woman. Woman. Mm-hmm. Gardy asked Eamon if perhaps she was so dominant that it was slightly on the bullying side. Gardy suggested to Eamon that he was a second-class citizen in his home, earning a pitiful one hundred thousand euros a year, compared to his wife's five hundred thousand euros a year. Celine ruled the roost, regularly barking orders at him. Maybe Eamon had had enough, and Jean was a young, fresh start. Eamon denied ever discussing divorcing his wife with Jean. Throughout all the interviews, and despite mounting evidence, Eamon stuck with the story of the intruder. Gardy questioned him about the blood-stained clothes found in the suitcase in the attic. 
He told Gardy he had no clue about anything that happened, as he had blacked out after the masked man had hit him with the brick. Who put the clothes in the attic, the masked man? I know, it's so stupid. So stupid. You're saying this intruder came in, struck your wife, struck you, and then put all these clothes in a bin bag, in a suitcase, in the attic, with like lens cameras underneath your camera equipment and then put all the toys all over it like what the like how did they even know how to get into your attic yeah exactly they can be quite hidden and I'm sure their house is massive yeah and it's you know what I mean and like I don't know so stupid how how does someone this stupid earn 100,000 a year he doesn't deserve that he does his wife gave him the job I know he's on his wife's salary but still do you know yeah. what I'm saying yeah like there's some people that are like working their butts off and yeah. then he's just like duh duh you know? <laughs> I'm sorry I'm duh, sorry duh, duh. but like how oh it just angers me so much like right. how much was he actually contributing nothing I mean she started the business and he didn't even join until two years later I mean yeah I don't I don't yeah mm-hmm Riding her and then coat-tails. he can't even handle it the way yeah. like she earns more than him and all that. Mm-hmm. Like, what, what's her business? What? Eamon said the only thing he could sort of remember was hearing one of the dogs barking inside the house. Eamon told the Garda that he had changed his clothes. He had changed his clothes to bring the dogs for a walk and left his change of clothes in the kitchen. He's trying to suggest that someone put on his clothes and murdered his wife. <gasps> Yeah, I know. It's like... uh, And then hid his clothes. Yeah. But other than that, he could not explain how they had become bloodstained and in a black bag under lenses in a suitcase in the attic. So he changed his clothes and where did he leave his clothes? In the kitchen. He left his clothes in the kitchen. And just that? took the dogs... I know. You don't change in the kitchen. You change in the bedroom. You leave the 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 bedroom. Can you hear the rain? Very faint. Oh, very faint. I'm worried about the aircon. The drip is going to be a lot. Okay, listeners, I I apologize if you can hear the rain. It is dripping on my aircon. <laughs> oh my god, it's so loud! Can you hear it? It's gone now. Oh, is you can't hear it? Mhm. Oh, yeah. Dick, it's not constant. All right. Okay. Yes, you do not change clothes in like. No. You change clothes in the bedroom. Mm-hmm. And then you leave your clothes your clothes there. Because obviously he was going to wear them again because he didn't put them in a wash basket or something. You know what I mean? So, mm. Mm. so Eamon had a bright idea. Maybe there was actually another intruder in the house the whole time. What? Eamon thought maybe this second intruder used Eamon's clothes that were in the kitchen to clean up the crime scene. Then... As like rags. As rags. Then put the clothes in a suitcase full of lenses to steal. Maybe the intruders were loading up on the household items. <gasps> Eamon was flabbergasted at his, at his own idea. He put it all together himself. Jesus, they were loading up, he said. Oh my God. The guard that were like, uh, no. Your t-shirt had bloodstains that seeped from the inside, which means it could have only came from your body. Second. Eamon replied, I know, second yay, idiot. Eamon replied, I have nothing to say to that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this guy. Fucking idiot. Oh, yeah. Garda then asked Eamon, and also, why is your face all scratched up? Eamon replied that the scratches had been made by his wife when he raised her hand to his face while he was checking her pulse. What? No, it doesn't make any sense. That's the most stupid. I know. Why didn't he just say the intruder? I don't know. I just... This is really worrying that this guy is... Cause... I know. This guy... Oh my god. <laughs> Eamon also said there used to be a gesture we had where we would touch each other on the face he said adding that it was a gesture of love oh, I can't with this I know I know 
he then said oh, it's just like some of the things he says is like really like creepy and it's like oh, what dude why would you say that it's so twisted he said to Gardy that while he was holding her hand she opened her eyes and her hand mm. clenched his for the last time before letting go oh my god why is he offering this stuff up he's, well he's making it up like. yeah it's so but it's sick yeah he's actually sick uh-huh. he's either sick or he no I was gonna say is there a little bit of guilt there and was there still a little bit of love for his wife but I the fact that he didn't mm. no I'm leaning more towards he's a sicko mm-hmm Garda then asked him about the strange list note thingy they found in the bedroom. Eamon said the note had nothing to do with his affair with Jane. That's <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. But in fact... Just when he comes out with these things, it's I like... Know. But you can, he says things that you can't back up. Yeah. So why like, say them at all? It's so bizarre. It's like a child. That's why I'm worried. I'm like, this man mm-hmm. has a child of his own. How has he functioned this long? I know. Like, Unless he just does really crap under pressure. I don't know. Maybe that's what's going on. But I it's don't know. It's so bad. Very worrying. It's just like, so it bad. says her fiancé's name on name the list. The, yeah. the date of the wedding. Of the uh, wedding. What the fuck? It has nothing to do with Jane. Oh my God. He said to Gardy, no, this was a short story he was working on. He wasn't... Ah, stop it. (laughs) He's a TV producer, after all. He was writing a doomed love affair that was based on his own experience. Ah, what a load of bollocks. Sure anyone can say that about anything. Oh yeah, this is just a, you know... Yeah. Say everything is fiction. The case was brought to trial in January 2010. What year was it? 2008. Okay, it's only a few years ago. Okay. It's not too bad. Okay. During the trial, the state pathologist testified and the jury heard that Celine had suffered three blows to the head. The first one knocked her to the ground and the next two thumps were while she was on the floor. Oh my God. The state pathologist said that only moderate force would have caused these three wounds found on her head. These injuries would have resulted in blood loss and asphyxiation. Her poor physical health and she had an an enlarged heart were also contributory factors in her speedy death. Mm. Mm -hmm. It was not until the very first day of the three-week trial that Eamon finally admitted that there was no intruder. Oh my god. For, like, what, two years he kept it going. And it was laughable from, like, day one. Right. So it's like, oh. However, in court, Eamon changed his story again. This oh time, he claimed... The lawyers were like, oh. we have to change this story. <laughs> <laughs> this time, Eamon claimed that he came home after leaving his daughter, daughter at school that morning. He said that Celine had started an argument with him over cleaning up after their dog and because he had forgot to put the mealworms out for the birds. Okay, gross. It's a weird argument. It's very bizarre. <laughs> it's like, what? What's happening? Yeah, I have those mealworm arguments all the time. <laughs> oh, yes. Eamon said it was a bizarre and accidental escalation in physical of a physical exchange. Nobody would get physical over like birds and dogs and stuff like what I know he what? said he said they tussled tussled like that's just like downplaying this to say yeah hate that it's like yeah. you're beating her up with a fucking brick we tussled, tussled. Yeah. Oh. oh Jesus Christ yeah I hate that he said they tussled on the patio decking during which his wife banged her head on the window ledge and fell twice so <sighs> gleaming it on the window ledge mm-hmm. what a f- Loser. Eamon claimed that when they were fighting on the deck, Celine bit his finger so hard he thought she might bite it off completely. So okay. he pushed her head away. This is when she banged her head on the area of the decking where there happened to be a brick beside her. Okay. Basically saying her blood is on the brick because she was biting my finger and I pushed her head into the brick. 
<sighs> you fucking. I mean, look, all of this is not impossible, but I'm sure the forensic don't line forensic mm-hmm. don't line up with mm-hmm. this. So he can tell the story if he wants to. Yeah, Eamon claimed the argument slash tussle stopped. The pair agreed that they would tell their daughter that an intruder had came to the house and attacked them both. That is the weirdest thing. Right. Traumatize your child so now the child thinks at any point right. an intruder's gonna come in. And yeah. I don't think a mother would ever agree nope, to never. that. Never. No, I would never like, agree to what? that. You would just say what? you would I mean like if I got into a physical fight, it was so, like you would say, I fell down the stairs. That's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. What the fuck? Why are you saying an intruder came into the house and hit mummy in the head with a brick? The fuck. But you know what that is? Mm. He's uh, he, he's putting it on her. Everything is putting it on he her. Is. You yeah. know, oh, she bit, she, bit, she bit my finger. She fell and hit yeah. her head off the windowsill. She, she agreed to the intruder story. And that's yeah. why I've been peddling that story for two years and whatever. You know? You're right. You're right. You can't take any blame. You can't. Any blame at all. You're right. Ugh. Yeah. He said that when they agreed that this was when he noticed the blood on his wife's head. So he rested her head on his lap. Oh. She then slipped into unconsciousness and he was unable to revive her. I very much doubt that they went from this escalated fight to being calm enough to talk about their daughter and how they were going to explain it to her and then she conveniently like dies after. You know, because like... it's all, as well, it's all within like half an hour. Mm. Like, like how could she be so like... Mm-hmm aware to have the conversation about the daughter but then all of a sudden now she's passing out it just doesn't seem yeah, realistic it, no Eamon also admitted in court that he did in fact change his blood stained clothes before calling an ambulance for his injured wife the pathologist noted that she may have survived if medical <gasps> help had don't. been summoned more quickly don't mm-hmm. no remember that the neighbour heard a scream at half Nine and he didn't yeah, call yeah, until yeah, yeah. ten. Oh, that's is a it? whole half an hour. That's that a is lot a lot time. when it comes to that bleeding kinda, out. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <gasps> and like he would have known that she has the whole heart condition and whatnot. Like he yeah. wanted her to die. Oh yeah, he, yeah. He wasn't. Eamon still pleaded not guilty to murder on Friday, January twenty ninth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. However. He was found guilty of... No, don't do that to me. What? No. What? It can't be manslaughter. Yes. Are you joking me? He got found guilty of manslaughter. But his story is so bollocksy and made up. I know. What? I know. I couldn't believe it. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Oh my God. He most obviously murdered his wife with a brick. Oh my God. Yeah. Manslaughter. Oh my god. He hid his bloodstained clothes. He spent yeah, half know. an hour hiding shit. Yeah, while his wife bled out on the yeah. patio. He, he looked after himself yeah. while she was. Yeah. What? What? Wow. Mm-hmm. God, how does his lawyer convince? I don't know. He, he would have had a good one, I'd say. Yeah, they have money, yeah. Money and. Yeah. The jury accepted the plea that Eamon had not intended to kill his wife. So they sentenced him to... How long do you think he got? Oh, stop that. (gasps) Oh, is this going to be something really pathetic? Like six years or something? Yep. Six years and 11 months. How did I know? Yep. I just knew. Like, Mm. what the fuck? Mm. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Could you imagine being, like... Celine's family members. Oh, how raging? livid would you be? So that was 2010, so he's yeah. out and about. Yeah, while in prison, Eamon had quite a successful time, the fucker. Stop it. Yeah. He threw himself into art, including painting, writing, and he had a high profile involvement in a play that was performed and watched by. No, it was performed in front of. The president of Ireland, Michael <laughs> D. Higgins. It's like, why is this he... Is yeah, really weird. 
I didn't know they did stuff like that. I didn't know they did stuff like that either. Eamon also won a, wrote an essay that won an award in a very prominent writing competition in Ireland. Fucking win what? A, winning awards in prison. What the hell is going on? Oh my gosh. And he did all of this within five years. Wow. Because Cody. only yeah. five years and two months after being sentenced, he was released. Oh, he got off early. Oh, yeah. of course. Yeah. Five years and two months. And do you know anything about Jean? Should she just distance That's herself it. completely? That's it. No, no, no. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, you never think your affair is going to end this way. Jesus. Yeah. Did you wonder, did she marry Keith? Oh, probably not. She had to testify in court and stuff against yeah. him. Yeah. Keith's probably majorly embarrassed. Oh, God. I, w- I wouldn't marry her. Mortified. Yeah. yeah. Um... Oh my goodness, this is bonkers. Thankfully though, when he left prison, there was no one there to welcome him back. His family and friends... Not the daughter. Yep. His family and friends, including his daughter, completely disowned him. Good. In 2011, so while he was in prison, the family had went to court to divide the assets. And it was in court that Celine's daughter said... I would rather stick pins in my eyes than see him return to our home where he killed my mother. Oh, <gasps> mm-hmm. wow. So at least he's lost everything else. Yeah. But he, st- he should still be in prison. It's just so bonkers that even the family believe he did it. So, but then the, mm-hmm. the jury obviously, what? Yeah. Didn't, I don't know. It's weird. It's weird, man. And that's the mm-hmm. end. <gasps> oh. um, mm-hmm. Miriam, that was horrible. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to say, this is a listener request. Oh, oopsie. Oopsie. Thank you. Yeah, really good one. Lou Marie McKay. That was it. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, good thank case. You the... Yeah. Okay. Please don't forget to subscribe. Uh, leave a review on Apple Podcasts and when you leave a review you can ask for a case and we will definitely British or Irish case and we will definitely cover it also if you want to check out our Patreon okay all right slán all you guys see you on the next one bye Me Time and Murder would like to thank and acknowledge our sources that make this podcast possible references can be found on our Instagram page